I used to treat productivity as a willpower game, that I had to force myself into doing more and pushing harder. And to some extent, I still think there's some good advice there. But I'm really proud of everything I've been accomplishing by instead relying on tools and systems. My name is Juan Carlos, and I'm a software engineer trying to figure out life in big tech and sharing what I learned along the way. Today, that is my most impactful productivity tools. Physical, digital, and psychological. I can honestly see how my career has progressed because of them, so let's dive in. There was a point in my life where I was working during the day with two different development teams for one of the most popular banking apps in Mexico. And at night, I'd still be wrapping up school. Around that time is when I discovered Todoist. And it's the first time I really internalized the power of to-do lists. It's multi-platform and you can also access it via web, which meant that my tasks were always available to me no matter what device I had at the time. At some point though, I started getting held back by my own poor task management. And as soon as I started looking into this, I inevitably came across getting things done, or GTD. It's a productivity method that emphasizes on the act of capturing all tasks and ideas into an organized system so you can focus on executing them rather than remembering them. GTD kind of revolutionized productivity and there's almost a cult behind it now. I remember I tried to go really hardcore at the beginning at following the system in my own Todoist workflow and it worked for a while but eventually realized that it was just too much. Trying to follow everything to the letter added a lot of friction, and I found that I would often avoid going on Todoist altogether for extended periods of time. Productivity is really more than just using a tool or following a system. It's about exploration and finding a method that lets you focus on what truly matters. For me, that is Todoist. It's become a critical tool for me to keep track of all the things that require my attention. And I still use it in combination with GTD principles, but my approach is a lot more nuanced. Instead of rigidly following every rule, I found a balance that allows me to use the system as a guiding framework, not as an overwhelming set of rules. There is one way that we can no longer really ignore if we want to keep up, and that is AI. And while I know that these are the most cliché tools in this list at the moment, I need to include them because of their real impact in my productivity. I'm of course talking about ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot, but don't worry, I'm not here to make yet another ChatGPT video. What I'm most interested in sharing with this is how my mind developed as I started getting a good grasp on how these new technologies work. Initially, it seemed like they were gonna be pretty useless because while they were impressive at not sounding like your old time chatbot, but as I started using them more and to learn how to leverage their strengths and avoid their pitfalls, something interesting happened. I began to develop what I call an instinctual LLM mindset. Just like learning to code induced a structural approach to problem solving in me, adopting LLMs made me really good at identifying problems that could be solved faster with a language model. And once those neural pathways are forged, a lot of tasks just come down to the time it takes you to type in the right prompt. Drafting scripts for my videos or writing code for personal projects became a lot easier as these tools practically became second nature in my workflow. And GitHub Copilot is just a specific use case for this. I can see how I'm often writing code in ways that I know will get the LLM to provide the best results. So things like typing a temporary comment right before a line of code, that acts like a mini prompt so that Copilot writes exactly the block of code I want. Or typing out how new functions are called before actually writing them so that Copilot knows what I'm expecting from them. A part of me is still genuinely worried about how easy it is to adopt these new tools. And I don't want to become useless without them. So I'm trying to pair my use of them with also doing some hard things manually. Things like journaling by hand instead of digital to practice patience, or reading full books instead of just trying to get LLM-generated takeaways. But there's definitely something to be said about leveraging these tools to augment our capabilities and free up time and mental space for more creative and strategic work. I know it's a stretch to call this one a productivity tool, but hear me out. Back when I was in the middle of quarantine, like many of us confined within my four walls, I made the weird decision of trying to get in the best shape of my life, you know, thinking that the pandemic would only last a couple of months. Now, we all know how that went, but the interesting thing about this experiment is that most other variables were fixed at the time. There was no commute, no office, no social gatherings, so it was a lot easier to isolate the influence of exercise in my productivity. At first, it felt like an uphill battle because because the other side of me hated the idea of stepping away from whatever project I was working on to go through the pain of a workout. And because of all those theories about us having a fixed amount of willpower, I assumed that it would be harder to get myself to work whenever I did make time to exercise. But as time passed and I had both consistent weeks and lazy weeks, I noticed something really interesting. Whenever I did go through the pain of a workout, it was a lot easier to get things done. So I started seeing it like a small investment of willpower with a guaranteed ROI. And that just feels like a really toxic way to prioritize my health, 
but it worked. And while I'm really just speaking from personal experience, I did go and do some reading as I was writing this video. It turns out that when you work out, your body creates more mitochondria in your cells, giving you extra energy for both physical and mental tasks. There's also evidence that suggests that exercise helps promote neurogenesis, the process in charge of creating new brain cells, which in turn help your cognitive functions. And if that wasn't enough, it releases feel-good chemicals in your brain which put you in a better mood and therefore make it easier for you to stay productive. So it really sets you up for long-term success both physically and mentally. So yes, with this habit, you're technically sacrificing productive time at first, but that investment makes it so that your next couple of work hours are worth twice as much in terms of what you can do with them. Now, I talked a bit about how to-do lists became a critical element in my arsenal, but there's one specific branch of that that I think deserves its own spot, checklists. When we talk about productivity, we often forget the underlying cognitive processes that make it possible. And if you think about it, there are a lot of tasks that we routinely need to do in our daily lives to operate smoothly. But through a lot of them, we still drag ourselves to get done. Think of the immense friction that you feel when you start thinking about taxes. It's a really big, daunting, amorphous and opaque task in front of you. Now that's a bit of an extreme example, but it applies to a lot of the things that you find yourself needing to do on a regular basis. Checklists take a lot of that anxiety away from the things you need to do. They lay a plan in front of you and make you the invaluable promise that if you just take care of the next tiny item on that list and you keep doing just that, you'll eventually have a completed project and an amazing night's sleep knowing that you didn't miss anything. And that reduced cognitive load has been a game changer for me. Plus they help make starting a task a lot easier and that's often all it takes to make progress. The simple act of checking off an item from a list gave me a sense of accomplishment while also clearly outlining what I needed to do next. No need to spend any extra energy trying to figure that out. This has been amazing now with the YouTube channel since I don't have as much time as I'd like with my full-time job to make these videos. Checklists remove the need for mental gymnastics every time I sat down to make a new video. It instead became about tackling the next item on that systematized checklist. In the aviation industry where safety and efficiency are critical, pilots use pre-flight checklists to ensure no detail is overlooked before takeoff. Errors can of course have critical consequences there. And this is also done by surgeons before any procedure. And we, as software engineers, should understand the power of automating repetitive tasks. It reduces errors and just increases productivity. I haven't yet read it personally, but it looks like the Checklist Manifesto is a really recommended book that explores the power of this. So if you want to learn more, you can check that out as well. Thankfully, implementing this idea isn't rocket science. Start by identifying routine tasks in your work or personal life. You can then break them down into smaller actionable steps. These become your checklist items. Whenever you need to perform a task, instead of relying on memory or willpower to get started, just take out your checklist. Okay, this one builds on the same theme of trying to reduce the friction of starting a task. If you're not familiar with the Pomodoro technique, it's basically a simple time management rule. You're going to do focused work for 25 minutes and rest for 5. If you're not done, you can go back and do another 25 minutes. But the beauty of it is that there's no rule on how many 25 minute chunks of work you need to do. And that really lowers the barrier of entry for a task. It makes starting it a lot less daunting. All you need to commit to is 25 minutes, and if you do that, you get every right to drop it and go do something fun instead. What I like about this hourglass set is that it's built to leverage the Pomodoro technique. 25 minutes on the large one and five minutes on the small one. All I need to do to start a task I'm dreading to do is just turn the hourglass. Once the sand is done falling, I am free to do something else or at least rest for five minutes. Now the beauty of the hourglass is that it does not sound an alarm when the 25 minutes are done. If for some reason I got in the zone and I'm deeply focused on something, I won't be taken out of that state by an alarm. I'll oftentimes just work right through the 25 minute mark and beyond. If I did drag myself through the task though, I'll likely be watching the hourglass anyways and know when it's done so I can go and get my reward. Plus, I think these look really cool. They were a birthday gift from a friend and they sit on my desk ever since. You don't need a physical hourglass though. The concept applies the same with a digital Pomodoro app or just by looking at your watch. But I find that having a physical symbol is often valuable for me. Systems and tools aren't static. They should evolve as you refine your workflow or as new information comes in. The goal is not perfection, but just making progress and freeing up some time and energy to spend on the things that matter most to you. I did save the best productivity tip for last though. Working for an hour is only as useful as how effective you are at making impact with that hour. And the way to maximize that effectiveness is just to level up your skill and craftsmanship. So you might wanna go watch last week's video where I walked through the five books that really leveled me up as an engineer. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.